Okay, well, the book that I reviewed was Nuts, Southwest Airlines' Crazy Recipe for Business and Personal Success. Um, it's written by Kevin and Jackie Freeberg. They're a married couple, and um, it was just basically sort of a history of the organization and kind of why they are so successful today. Um, now, Kevin and Jackie both work for um, a consulting firm in San Diego, and they give speeches about um, good management practices and sort of how to be a leader. And so they kind of had that experience going into this project. Now, the book is set up into four different sections. And um, so I'm just going to tackle each one that way. Um, the first one is The Legend Takes Off, The Southwest Spirit is Born. And um, it talks about how um, the whole idea started, which um, Roland King and John Parker, these two Texas entrepreneurs, um, one of them actually owned a small air carrier service. Um, they realized that between these three cities in Texas, it was very expensive um, to travel between by bus or um, car, and so they wanted to set up just a small intrastate um, air carrier for these three cities. And this cocktail napkin is where they first sketched their plan um, when they met with uh, Herb um, Kelahar, who later became the CEO, and um, he's probably one of the most prominent names associated with this industry, but uh, they have this cocktail napkin on a plaque in the office because this is just where, where it all began. And so their idea was to give everybody the opportunity to fly by providing low fares but um, quality service. And so the low fares was really the basis of their whole um, strategy and so they kind of had to figure out how to make a profit um, while still keeping their fares low and attracting those sort of customers. And so this is um, Herb Kalahar, actually. Um, he is the CEO of Southwest, and he actually was the CEO until 2008. Um, he just stepped down, but he'll still be an employee for the next like five to ten years, I believe. Um, but he, is one of, he was one of the co-founders of the industry. And so um, it kind of started off rocky. Um, they First, they had a lot of money, but they didn't have any certificate to fly. And then they went through all these legal battles with other air carriers who claimed that there wasn't room for a new, new airline in that state. And um, after putting basically all their finances into the courts, um, they then got their certificate, but they didn't have any money to get it off the ground. And so um, it was kind of hard to struggle, like to struggle through that at first. But it kind of instilled a sense of loyalty and like we're survivors and all the people that started this, and they were really motivated to get it moving. And so one of the ideas they came up with was um, a two-tiered pricing. They did elas um, price elasticity when in relation to their fares. And so they already had low cost, um, $13 flights actually between these cities. So what they did was during peak times, they raised those prices. I believe it was 16 to $17, but during off-peak times, they lowered that $13 even more. So this way they were able to fill up the planes um, and they were making a lot more money um, even though they were charging you know, very low cost to get <laughs> to fly around those seas. Um, another thing that they came up with was the 10 minute turn. Um, they had three planes, but their schedule was basically built for a four plane schedule. And so they had to um, turn the planes within 10 minutes, which basically you had to land, get people off, get all the baggage off, clean it up, load up the new plane, and head off in 10 minutes. And um, what they said in the book over and over again was nobody really knew that we couldn't do it and so we just tried it and it worked and so that's one of the things they still pride themselves on today is how quickly they get things done. So um, next they talk about business basics with the Southwest twist. Now their mission statement um, has to do with how like Southwest Airlines exists to make a profit achieve job security for every employee and make flying affordable for more people and that job security thing um, is really huge because they have laid off, at least since this book was published in 1996, they laid off three people, um, and those three people were immediately rehired. And so they're all about um, getting quality people to work for them in the first place and then keeping those people. And um, I guess kind of creating a family atmosphere so people are more motivated to stay with the company and um, do enough hard work to keep it going. So um, one of their other methods in relation to the planes was um, they disregarded the hub and spoke method, which was something that a lot of airlines were doing. You bring in people from all these little cities to one main airport and then fly them to their final destination. But they saw it as planes are only making money when they're in the air and you waste so much time just sitting around waiting for people to come in 
um, that they disregarded this method. And people thought they were crazy, but it worked. And especially once they perfected that 10 minute turn, um, they just, they were being really successful. Um, they also keep things simple when it comes to their equipment. They only use one type of airplane, which is the Boeing 737. Um, and so all their pilots, flight attendants, everybody knows that plane inside and out. So whenever they, they could get new models, but it's always that same um, plane. They save a lot of money when it comes to training, things like that. Um, also, when they hire their employees, they kind of have a different standard of professionalism. Now, um, Herb Kel Kelahar, I have problems saying his last name, Kelahar, um, he wanted human resources to hire people with humor. That was basically the main quality. Um, you had to have a good humor because they felt attitude was the biggest thing and it's inherent. And so you hire, you hire people with the right attitude and then you train them um, for the skills. This is another picture of Herb Gellar. Um, now they felt one of the most important things in this industry was to maintain um, a culture, a certain kind of culture for their fam or treat their employees like families, basically. Um, so everybody's emotionally invested, personally invested, everyone's motivated towards the same purpose. Um, they felt that culture was one of the most precious things, and so it's the thing you have to work out harder than anything else. Um, now, there's 13 different principles that are part of their culture. I'm just going to name those off really quick because we can go in depth forever on those. But um, profitability is number one. Um, low cost. And we have family, fun, and love, which are not things you, really, you usually associate with a business. But um, hard work, individuality, ownership, legendary service, egalitarianism, common sense, simplicity, and altruism. Now, the family environment, they feel um, if you foster the right kind of environment, um, and they felt a family was, was what they were going for because it's, you have this support system that... Uh, you know, they help you through good and bad times. They want people um, not to just, you know, be discouraged when they make mistakes, but grow from it. And um, so that's, that's also kind of relates to why they don't, they try not to lay people off if they don't have to. Um, they give people second chances, just like a family would. And so if, when people have confidence in their jobs, they're able to per perform their service a lot better. Okay, um, when it comes to advertising, they... Um, they try to make it as fun as their work environment. And so the employees wear casual dress. They have really funny demeanors. They're supposed to use their sense of humor. Um, and a lot of flights, they will sing over the intercoms or they'll crack jokes with the passengers. Um, now, there was one dispute over an ad logo with uh, Stevens Aviation. They were both, Stevens Aviation actually started um, the Plain Smart uh, logo that Southwest is kind of still using today. and. Um, but instead of going through the courts again, they had an epic arm wrestling battle in a, a huge wrestling arena with all the employees coming and they're like, whoever wins gets to keep using the logo. And uh, so they had three rounds and like each round, whoever lost, they had to donate $5,000 to a charity of their choice. And so by the end of this, you have $15,000 donated to charity, which obviously raises everybody's spirit and goes through the altruism thing that they were talking about. Um, they did settle this legal dispute and um, it was just kind of a great advertising employee as well because both companies got, you know, a lot of attention from that. Um, another one of their big things was employees come first and customers come second, which is not something I had heard before. Um, but they feel if you treat your employees well, then they'll in turn treat your customers well, which, which makes sense. Um, so they, they really spend most of their time fostering the environment within their employees and have even been known to turn away customers um, that disrespect their employees. Okay, um, and then The Legend Lives On is the fourth um, section of the book, and that's more, just kind of reiterates everything else that came beforehand, and um, more condensed tips, I guess, for people who are in leadership positions, but um, they really try to make all of their, every single one of their employees a leader um, and an innovative thinker. And so that's just something that they, they foster. Um, and so when it comes to the writing style of this book, I mean, I really enjoyed it. It's really easy to read, um, whether or not you're in the business or economics field. Um, they have lots of anecdotes and stories to help get their points across, and um, they have lots of letters from customers written in telling of their personal experiences. So it's really fun to, to get through, um, very reader-friendly. Um, 
it did get a little repetitive towards the end, especially um, the last, I mean, section four was basically everything that had been said already. Um, but it was still interesting and still fun. Um, this is one review that I found um, from Warren Bennis, and he's an author of On Becoming a Leader. Um, I agree that he said it's a blueprint for all organizations to succeed, not just airlines, because it's more about customer service and kind of how that is really what determines the success, the success of your industry, and um, because it sort of permeates through every aspect of your corporation. And so it was, I thought it was really interesting. Um, it kind of reminded me of like the self-help books, I guess. Um, I was talking to them earlier about Dale Carnegie specifically, um, how to win friends and influence people. Basically all of the points in that book are in this book as well. So it's more about the people than I guess the money or the business practice aspects of their corporation, but um, I really enjoyed it.